There's this sort of, you know, mental jujitsu that I do with myself to stay focused and not think about how much pressure is in this job. When we started Eventbrite, I had no idea what I was doing, nor did I know what was going to happen. And it was sort of the first time in my life that I didn't have that picture of what, of what the plan was. You know, when you are coming after another CEO, there is a footprint before you, and you have to be able to develop your own voice, your own style, your own leadership footprint. What was that journey like for you? When you become CEO, there is just something in that title that you know changes everything mentally and it's a very mental job and so i had to quickly figure out how to center myself and focus on the mission and not let the kind of bigness of it you know get in my way or slow me down or sort of render me paralyzed i think of my role now as one where every day i wake up and i earn my stripes as CEO. How has your relationship to failure evolved? I mean, inherently it's part of any journey, um, particularly in the entrepreneurial landscape where the highs can be so high and the lows are so low, just given the unique trajectory. But it's easy to say, you know, this is a moment I'm gonna learn from it, yeah. but it's very hard when you're in that moment of, of crushing disappointment. Well, I think it's about having conviction about what you're running towards. There's so much richness in that and it evokes just a different conviction. And then when you couple that conviction with resilience, so knowing that along the way you're going to have points of failure regardless, nobody ever makes it through a journey without having moments of failure. But if you look at those moments of failure as just lessons learned and data points, and you don't get too hung up on the emotional value of failure, then you just start grinding away. And I think of every single challenge as a series of smaller chunks of work to be done. People would, would look at someone such as yourself in the industry and in the business uh, that you've built and see an incredibly powerful leader. How do you define the term power? I think that power is having a platform and a voice and being able to inspire and influence and also create change. And I don't take that for granted. And certainly for many years, I didn't feel even old enough to hold any sort of influence or be a role model. I still don't feel old enough. I don't think hopefully we ever feel old enough to do anything, but <laughs> to, to, to be in a certain place or time. But I do feel a sense of duty and a sense of privilege to be able to be a role model of sorts for other women because I know how important that was to me and still is today to surround myself with strong women um, and just those defining moments.